This episode of Good Living Now is sponsored by Kubings. Now, Kubings has just released this amazing hands-free Auto 10 juicer. Now, one of the things that I like about the Auto 10 is that it has a super large hopper that allows you to put more produce in at one time. So you just feed the juicer, turn it on, and walk away. Now, like all Kubings juicers, not only can you juice fruits and vegetables, but it also has extra strainers. There's one for smoothies, and then there's another one that allows you to make plant-based milks and sorbets. Now, guess what? You also have a 15-year warranty. So use my code JUICEGUY and save 10% so you can get what? Get your juice on. Welcome to the Good Living Now podcast, where we talk to real people about real change that leads to real health. I'm your host, Harold LaFall, and our guest today, man, I am super excited. You may have seen her on the Steve Harvey Show or on the Tamron Hall Show or all over social media. She had a video that went super viral. She had this iconic picture on her 70th birthday. Her name is Chef Babette. Welcome her to the show. Hey, Chef Babette, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I am so honored to have you on this show. Thank you know, you I've been me. I've been following you for for about three years. I really? saw that I yeah, I saw that iconic picture. And when I say iconic, let me tell you, Chef Bobette, I'm at the gym three years ago on the treadmill, and I'm scrolling through Instagram, and I see this picture of this beautiful lady in a black bathing suit. I'm like, oh, oh. she's beautiful. And then, though, here's what happened, Chef Barbette. I'm looking at the picture, and it says something about 70 years old. I said, somebody lying. Somebody <laughs> lying. And so I still have that picture to this day on my phone because I started sending it to all my friends, you know, all my friends that are 50 and older. I'm like, they say she's 70 years old. I don't believe them. But if this is what 70 looks like, I'm here for it. Aww. So you know, and, and so when I saw it, I'm like, okay, first of all, I had to follow you because I'm like, I need to find out what it is that she's doing to look this fine at 70. Oh, you, I'm like, you are just really nice. <laughs> no, no, this is real. This is real because truly you are age defying. I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but I want to find out what it is that you're doing. And then I started like researching and finding out a little more about you and I realized that, you know, what they say in church, you don't look like what you've been through. Oh. And Ooh, I goodness. was so surprised by your story. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your journey and what got you here. You know, I um like every last one of us humans, you're right. It is just uh, an experience, a journey. And um I've been just like everybody else. I've been through my share of um, pain. I've experienced mm -hmm. pain. Um, and a lot has to do with um, me just having to grow into myself. I, I, I don't know how else to put it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I um, came from very humble beginnings. My mother had a third grade education moved here from North Carolina, uh, was bound and determined never to have us on welfare. So mm. she worked two and three jobs. Consequently, uh, my sister and I um, had to be boarded out sometimes. And, you know, sometimes people don't treat your kids right. So I mm. went through uh, a lot of um, abuse from people that had to care for me. Now, that wasn't everybody, but there was one in particular that really gave me a rough time and um, I, I molested at five years old and mm. then mistreated. My mother working two and three jobs, so I'm not able to be with her. And I'm, I was really silent. I wouldn't tell anybody what was going on with me. Um, finally, she was able to get us home. She met somebody, married this person. But he was sexually abusive to me as well. Mm. Um, but he allowed my mother to be able to stay home and care for us after a while. And finally, I grew up. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
my mother cooked some of everything. So I was always really sickly, um, full of a lot of inflammation, had horrible earaches all the time when I was a kid. So I didn't go to school a lot. Um, mm. Well, I missed a lot of school. Um, mm. And um, the, the diet she had us on, there was no way I was going to feel any better. I had asthma, eczema, mm. bad, bad earaches. It was, I was a wipeout when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. So becoming an adult uh, and taking control of my own life after a while turned out to be pretty good. However, I'm on my fourth marriage. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I will, you know, fourth, fourth, fourth hey, marriage. And how, how old were you on your first marriage? I, I, my first marriage, 21 high school, sweetheart, well, neighborhood oh. sweetheart, mm -hmm. but he was a heroin addict, mm. uh, uh, turned alcoholic. Mm. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy because I would always just meet somebody and if they liked me and I liked them, it's like, OK, let's hook mm. up and get married. I never really understood who I was before right. I started wrapping it up with folks. So, of course, it's going to be challenging. I'm going to go through changes mm. because I'm a kid still. Um, mm. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, but then after my <laughs> third try. I met my current. <laughs> <laughs> Your third try, okay. Ooh, okay, so I met my third Rondo Rondell Davis, and that's who I'm with right now. Um, so you say your third uh, try? No, it was he's my fourth. I said after okay. my third. Oh, after your third. Okay, after gotcha. My third. Okay, gotcha. And I met him in 1990. Mm. Um. And on our first date, you probably heard all about this, took me to Griffith Park. We went for mm -hmm. a run. I never ran heels in my life. And mm. he running the whole thing backwards. And <laughs> as, I'm thinking he's nuts. But I'm thinking to myself, wow, people do this? And mm -hmm. I thought, one of these days, I'm going to be able to come up here and run this thing, maybe at a walker's pace, but in right. a running mode. And I can do that today. It's mm. incredible how he brought so much into my journey, so much right. positivity into the journey. Um, and that's not saying that Ron and I are running 100. Right. We're challenged with getting along with each other, with agreeing on mm. each other like everybody else can be. Mm -hmm. But had I not met Rondell Davis, I would not be sitting here today talking to you. Now, wow. that, that, that's real. Uh, he got me into the first meal he prepared for me was my first vegan meal. Um, mm. I ain't know nothing about no veganism. He kept <laughs> giving me some basmati brown rice. I'm like, what, <laughs> like, is, what is this? this? <laughs> I've been eating Uncle Ben's white right. snow. And I'm like, basmati brown? Um, That's I fancy. Thought veganism was, you had to be a Hare Krishna to be a vegan. <laughs> I didn't, I was so ignorant. I didn't know what was up. Anyway, he gave me books. And mm. of course, I'm thinking, oh, now I got to read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I didn't want to embarrass myself too bad. Uh -huh. So after uh, reading Fit for Life was the one, volume one, mm. um, that just completely changed my perspective on mm -hmm. food. And then he also gave me the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eric. Mm -hmm. And after the first meal with him, no indigestion. I mean, I used to be the loudest burp belcher mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. None of that. No acid reflux. Didn't have to take no Tums. That's mm -hmm. why I don't know, understand humans mm -hmm. that um, we're the only species that has to medicate ourselves. I'm, am I stuck? Am I? Am I no, no, there? no. Uh, okay. You good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you good. Well, well anyway. Um, so I read The Mucusless Diet, and after reading those two books, just those two in particular, mm. I was ready to change. I was ready to do, mm. you know, to, to get a little bit closer to loving myself. Right. Um, and now here we are. That was in 1990. Ron and I were married in 1992. And um, here we are in t almost 2024. I was about to turn 40. He was 42. He was about to turn 42. And uh, here I am, 73, as of December wow. 7th. 
and he's wow. 75. I know. Wow. I look, know. Wow. And I, I look, and I, I'm still I'm still thinking that that is not the truth, but are we going to go with that? I, so happy yeah. belated birthday. Happy Thank you, honey. December 7th, 1950. Wow. So 27 years, I'll be 100. And let me just tell mm. you, youngster. Mm. Oh, well, look, I appreciate because you know I'm 56, so I let appreciate that. Let me just that. tell you, <laughs> youngster, how fast. <laughs> <laughs> I just had my 72nd birthday. I did 100 push ups in the restaurant. It 100? Feels, 100 push ups in the restaurant. Wow. It feels like it was last month. I, I promise you, this time just goes so quickly. And I say that yeah. because we really need to learn to appreciate our now in right. terms of hanging out in your now space and not living in the past or jumping mm. too far in the future. Go ahead and just love your moments, really and truly. Um, they're gifts. They're gifts. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I, I became vegan in 1990, and uh, here it is, almost 2024, and I'm still living the lifestyle. I'm so grateful that I made the transition when I did. Well, like I said, you look amazing. Thank you. And, and so when growing up, were you always, at, did you always have like an athletic physique or were you always athletic growing up? Yeah, you know what? It, I really did. I, I never, I never decided to be on the track team in school. However, I lived on the east side of L.A. And uh, mm. I lived on Little Street <laughs> right across, right across the street from an elementary school called 20th Street Elementary. And on our block, you know, we get out in the middle of the street and race. I was usually right. barefoot, mm -hmm. but I could beat every boy on the block running. I, mm. I was fast. I was, <laughs> <laughs> but I never decided to to take it up in school, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I, I was pretty strong, pretty athletic. Um, uh, but mm. I had so many issues with other things. It, right. It kind of, yeah kind of kept me out of going full force with it. But yeah, I was pretty athletic. Um, but I would have been a hot mess had I kept eating right. the way that I was. My, listen, my mother put so much sugar in her food and her spaghetti sauce. You know how you, we used to always drink mm. milk mm -hmm. with with something, milk with a, a, a donut a, or something? A, yeah. Wait, yeah, well, you needed milk with my mama's spaghetti sauce. Oh. <laughs> 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 my mother put so much so much sugar in the Kool-Aid it used to be syrupy it was like wow. syrup. she just had us addicted to sh refined sugar right. and uh, oh I was very very addicted to um, monosodium glutamate accent mm. yeah monosodium mm. glutamate my mother put mm -hmm. it in everything I would go to a restaurant and if I knew they did not put accent in their food I'd take a plastic piece of plastic mm. put me some accent in there and i'd sprinkle Ooh. it on my food when it <laughs> <laughs> i was so, a hot man so was, so so chef how difficult was it like you read those two books was it an easy transition for you you know transitioning it was easy because i felt mm. so miserable after i ate all the time and then eating mm. this way it was like nothing I, I started learning how to combine the food. I started mm. learning simple things like a carbohydrate and a protein are, are not the greatest combination. Mm. Or you don't eat fruit with regular food. Fruit is, eat, and I learned things like acid fruit, sweet fruit, sub acid fruit, melons, and what to eat with what. I, mm. I never knew any of this stuff, but I always had horrible indigestion. I could mm. never use the bathroom to the point that mm. I had doctors telling me, oh, once or twice a week. That is a lie, folks. Mm. Do not think you're going to eat every day and just poop once or twice a week. You're going to wow. be bloated and a hot mess. That is, the, If you eat every wow. day, you need to shit every day. Period. Right. Period. <laughs> or twice right. a day. Son, don't, <laughs> don't buy into that. That's a lie. Right. You need Anyway, yeah, I, I, I was. It, <laughs> I'm so grateful to my life right now, really and truly. And then to be able to open a restaurant and mm -hmm. share our way with whoever 
decides they want to cross over, you know, and come on in that restaurant and check us out. But right. um, yeah, yeah, that's where I was. And, and Chef Bobby, you know, so often we think as we get older, we automatically are going to gain weight and get heavy. What do you say to people who have that mindset and feel that way? <laughs> well, it's true. If you eat the wrong stuff, most of the time, <laughs> look at America. Come on. Mm -hmm. You think we're doing something. We're doing mm -hmm. something that we're not supposed to be doing. And, and, and most of the time, we um, are not eating appropriately. I, I'll just put mm -hmm. it like that. Um, mm -hmm. Because we are so we are so huge, and we have so many mm -hmm. illnesses that we that we didn't even used to have years ago. You know, mm -hmm. the diabetes has just got a lock on people. Diabetes, heart disease, all that kind of stuff has just got us locked down. Now, it's not to say that I don't put on weight. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I. This is how I gauge myself. Mm -hmm. um, I work out five days a week two hours a day. Oh, but I have to share this mm. with you. Oh my gosh. This is something else I want your folks to hear. Oh, mm. I did. I, I got to share this. Okay. So mm. last Monday I went to the gym. I do an hour spin. Mm. I was feeling so good. I decided that I was going to go and get on the treadmill. Mm. Now I haven't been on the treadmill in a while. Cause mm -hmm. I do my first hour spin, just, you know, giving my knees a break. And then I go to a trainer and do about 45 minutes with a trainer. Well, I got on the, the treadmill and I decided I was going to pump it up to seven. Oh, and do me a quick run on the tread. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did that. Wow. I was like, wow. yeah, just getting it. Wow. <laughs> and then, then when the trainer came, I went in there. I was showing out. I was doing everything, pra practicing uh -huh. my balance, the whole nine yards. I got to work. <laughs> and I bent down. To, it was a piece of lint in the bathroom mm -hmm. on the floor uh -huh. under the sink. I bent. No, it was a spider web. That's what it was. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. bent down to get it. And my knee said, snap, crackle, oh. pop. And I've been Whoa. crippled since Monday. Oh, no. Yeah, because, come on now. I ain't been on a treadmill in all the years. What was I thinking? I right, wasn't. right. I wasn't. Yeah. I was out of my lane. Mm. If I was going to get on the treadmill, I probably should have walked. I should have mm -hmm. done a, a quick walk. But mm -hmm. to get on there at 73 years old, Seven. that's what my niece said. My niece said, you're 73, boo. Right, right, what right. What you doing? What you doing? Well, let us show you what you just did. <laughs> Snap, crackle, right. pop. Now you ain't oh. Oh, wow. Stay in your lane, people. Mm. I see women on the street right now. I know they haven't been running. And mm -hmm. they be out there on that cement running. And I'm thinking to myself, you are going to be so messed up. Mm. Yeah, you just have to, you have to know where you are. You have to stay right. in your lane. Take your time. Be mm. consistent. Mm -hmm. And you'll be fine. I had to learn mm -hmm. that lesson. So I'm sharing it with mm -hmm. y'all. <laughs> So you don't have to learn it too. Seriously, I don't know what is wrong with my knee. I did not go to mm -hmm. the doctor. I don't have a primary care physician. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I always brag about that. But if you right. don't do ignorant things, you're going to need a primary care physician, even mm -hmm. eating poorly. Don't, right. don't think you're right. past that because I'm not. Right. So I'm dealing right. with a knee. I have to work, do everything that I do with a knee that is still jacked. And Acting I've been up. this way since Monday. And it's almost Monday again. So I'm thinking mm. it's probably going to take this thing for about two to three weeks to get Put back heel. right. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, I, I know you asked me a question, but I, that uh, came up and I had to share No, that. no, that's good. So uh, so you normally work like two hours, five days a week? Uh-huh. And then what Monday do you eat? Friday. That's what people want to know. What is, what, is, what is Chef Bobette eating? What do you eat like in a typical day? Okay, so I'm not at 73. I know you know that most seniors don't really require a lot of bulk on their plate. And most people mm -hmm. that are older people, I know, you know, somebody that they just don't eat a lot. They eat whatever they want, mm -hmm. but they don't eat a whole bunch. Right. My husband's the same way. He doesn't eat a, a lot. Um, and I don't require a lot of bulk. I, mm -hmm. I, I eat 
I enjoy eating. However, mm -hmm. I, I really look more for nutrients. Yeah. Then I do a whole bunch of bulky cooked food. I'm not, yeah. I'm not satisfied with that. So I love juicing and I love mm -hmm. green juicing. I, mm -hmm. I sell sea moss, so I'm definitely mm -hmm. taking the sea moss. And like mm -hmm. for inflammation, the the um uh uh uh, uh what's the, what's it called? It's the yellow turmeric sea moss is oh, yeah. excellent to you mm -hmm. know to so I, I I do my juicing, I do of course a lot of greens. Um, I can make a handful of nuts a meal, mm -hmm. but I just make sure that I'm getting the nutrients. I'm caring for myself properly. That's important to me. So my palate, right. I ain't tripping. I'm not tripping. Right. All that. I don't need all that. Right. Right. You know right. I mean? Yeah. Because isn't it true, though, as we get older, we don't need as many calories, but we need more nutrients. Nutrients is it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But but it ain't going to help the knee if you get on the treadmill after three years and try to <laughs> go try on to to level spring. seven. Level yeah. seven. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't happening. So now, don't do that. <laughs> now, Chef Barbet, I got to ask you about this glow that you have. Your have skin is just, yeah, this yeah, skin. You know what it is? Like, what is it? It's what is it that oil. you do? It's coconut, coconut oil. oil. I look, <laughs> I have a friend. <laughs> he, he made his transition a while ago. He used to come in the restaurant and call me Shiny. Uh -huh. it was, uh -huh. it, I, I knew him when I first discovered coconut oil all over the place. And I would have so much on, I'd be shining all over the place. Uh -huh. So I, I've learned to calm it down now. But <laughs> yeah, I love coconut oil. <laughs> So that's you put it all over your body, your face, and everywhere. That's where that glow's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all be looking, y'all be looking at them pictures and stuff, going, "Why she shining like that?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some other products that I use because I wear makeup and I love makeup. Um, mm -hmm. But usually on my body, in particular, I, I have put. Uh, coconut oil under my makeup. I have done that, but you know, I'm getting a little bit more mature. They got some other products out there for ladies. So on my, under my makeup, sometimes I'll use some other things. However, uh, for my body is coconut oil. Mm, mm. Yep. Well, I mean, it's working. It's definitely Thank working you. for you. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give to someone who maybe 50 has never worked out, is still eating the standard American diet, but is wanting to change? They're, they're wanting to change, but they just don't know, where do I start? You know, I'm so glad. That is an excellent question. Please keep that on your question list because I wouldn't have started had I not been educated. Mm. Rondo gave me books. He didn't just mm -hmm. feed me. He gave me books. He said, you mm -hmm. need to read these. He wasn't vegan. He was not mm -hmm. a vegan. But mm -hmm. he had some knowledge. And he shared that with me. And once I ate the food that he prepared, I realized then, I can do this. I can do this. Because I mm -hmm. knew then it was necessary for me to do it. So mm -hmm. um, knowledge is power, y'all. You mm -hmm. there's there's so much information out here. You can go on YouTube. They have free documentaries on YouTube telling us all about the food we are eating because there are very few of us that have our own. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it when you grow food in your yard? Uh, garden. Oh, garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, very few of us, most of most of us are pretty much relying on supermarkets to for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just some things, some practices nowadays that that's why we have so much illness. I, I just it's horrible. But there's a mm -hmm. documentary in particular that people need to watch. It's called Eating Our Way to Extinction. It's a mm -hmm. free documentary. Mm -hmm. Watch it. Watch mm. it. But educate yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Educate yourself on veganism. Why be mm -hmm. a vegan? If, if you're mm -hmm. still eating the standard American diet that, that's full of chemicals, all kind of dyes, we give this stuff to our babies. And then you wonder mm -hmm. why so many babies have cancer? Come on. Mm. Right. 
The cancer mm. hospitals, they, they, they full of babies with, with this stuff. And, and mm. um, it's because of what we're feeding them. We take them to fast food restaurants. I, re I can remember my mother was still alive. And mm -hmm. when, she, when, when McDonald's got hot and she started taking us to McDonald's every Friday. And I remember my burger was the Big Mac with them french mm -hmm. fries that probably ain't even french fries but anyway right <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> you know we just have to educate ourselves that's what you the key word in your question was and they just don't know educate right. yourself educate right. yourself period don't wait for anybody else to tell you what to, they've been lying to us growing up one of the things that i used to hear a lot um from uh, folks in my family is diseases that we just accepted as common. Like if you got, as you got older, you were going to get sugar diabetes. We used to call it sugar or you going to get high blood pressure. It was just like a common thing. It was like, you know, it was like, it was almost a rites of passage until, you know, uh, getting older, like you were going to get those things. And I think right. you're absolutely right. It's about knowledge. We just don't know. We just have accepted yeah. certain things as a part of the aging process that really isn't a part of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You are so right. And that, and once I understood that, um, I mean, of course, we're going to go through the changes that we automatically go through living on a planet and we have to deal with uh, uh, gravity and all the things that we have to deal with. But once we learn how to actually nourish ourselves, um, I, I think, of course, I'm aging. Of course, I am. But mm. it's not rapid fire. You understand? Mm. Because right. I keep movement in my life. And I make sure that I'm nourishing myself. And, and, and even though I'm not running a hundred percent, working every moment of the day on keeping my attitude right. I lose my mm. temper sometime like anybody else, but mm. it hurts nobody but me. When mm. I, I mean, it, ain't nobody's heart beating when I'm, if I yell or scream, ain't nobody right. getting a heartbeat but me. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we, that, that's a part of honoring your journey, your human experience, life itself, and practicing self-love and self-care. And mm -hmm. um, food has a lot to do with it, a lot to do with loving yourself. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people get, I, I can remember being really mistreated on uh, Instagram because of a clip from a a, a podcast interview mm -hmm. and I, I was basically saying I don't have the gear to jump on top of a cow tear it apart and eat it on the spot it's not my diet mm -hmm. man those uh, uh, meat eaters came at me so cold blooded until one of them say shut up little nigga and I was mm -hmm. like this could be really really dangerous this, mm -hmm. this social media stuff with ignorance it, it, you know right. just you know, we do really stupid things to each other. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, well, well, they took me back to prehistoric times. They said, well, we don't need, you don't need teeth in your mouth. We created tools and that's, it, you know, I was stupid and mm. dumb. I was a clown, but it was the little shut up little nigga that I was mm -hmm. saying, okay, it's time for me to have this lady block all these comments and I'm getting ready to report all these people and we get ready to do something else. Cause this to me, it felt, well, it just felt a little scary. To right. Have people going at me like that because mm. of my opinion, I've been in the vegan uh, community since 1990. So I ain't never going back to eating death. Never. Right. I don't right. Care. You can eat whatever really. And truly, I really don't care what you eat. However, mm. our decisions, affect the whole so the yeah. planet the planet is is overheating and eating animal flesh cows in particular are causing a lot of it now they ain't gonna mm -hmm. tell you that on msnbc they know they, right. they only talk about oil they only talk about fossil fuel they don't mm -hmm. ever mention cows and the effects that we're 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 getting from ingesting cows and they are burning down tearing up forests so cows chickens pigs and fish can eat soy come on mm. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, do your homework. Yeah. Do your homework for you. Don't do it for me. Do it for you. And learn yeah. what you should be eating. The only thing that would put weight on me is inactivity if I'm not mm. moving and if I start eating too much cooked food. Mm -hmm. So I'm very careful with my diet. I, mm. I, I don't want to be buying clothes every other month because I'm too <laughs> big to wear them. I don't know. Mm -mm. I got. Mm. I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking, mm. should you give some of this stuff away? Because you still mm. be wearing the same stuff. <laughs> 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 Way to save money, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be husky like that. I don't. Right, right, right. But think about if I weighed two hundred pounds right now, and I'm not fat shaming. So don't mm. don't even start with that. I'm saying right. if I busted my knee and I weighed two hundred pounds mm. right now, how would I yeah. feel? Right. And I because I yeah. only weigh 125. But if I mm. weighed 200 and had to mess with this knee, mm. yeah, I'm looking out for me. Y'all can weigh as yeah. much as you want to weigh. This is saying I'm not doing it. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> Chef, my bad. That is you, you are so right in terms of educating yourself, oh. though, is so important. Isn't you it? know, and, and and because a lot of times we just hear what other people are saying without doing our own research. Exactly. And I know and I know for me. After I got my cancer diagnosis, I started doing research to figure out how did this cancer happen in my body. And then I started to find research that showed there was a strong correlation between milk and uh, oh. meat. And my, none of my doctors talked about that. Nobody said anything to me about that. And once I got that information, it was easy to make a decision to stop eating that stuff. It was, a, wow. it was like a no brainer, but it was getting the education to know that, okay, this, these are things that are strongly correlated to this disease that I'm dealing with. Why am I going to continue to eat that stuff? Right. And I know that Good causes for you. disease. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Did you ever have to have surgery or anything like that? Yeah. So I had um, these radioactive um, um, seeds put into my prostate and I only did it because my doctors were rushing me to it and I didn't mm -hmm. have the information. I didn't know any better. Uh -huh. You know, I heard cancer and my doctors were rushing me to to have surgery. It was yes. only after I had the surgery that I started getting all this new information that really helped me to easily make a lifestyle change. It was it was oh. it was it was real easy. Good and and unfortunately, I see so many people that get a cancer diagnosis that don't have the information and right. they go back to eating the same way and they're dealing with the same type of stress and they wonder why there's a reoccurrence of cancer. If you've not made the changes, mm -hmm. you know, there's a strong probability that it's going to happen again. Good you for know? you, though. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. But so, Chef Babette, you and Ron, y'all yeah. have a restaurant. Right. Tell us a little bit about your restaurant and how people can come to your restaurant. If well, in we have a, a vegan spot here in Inglewood, California. It's 114 mm -hmm. North Market Street in Inglewood, downtown Inglewood. We're only about 10 minutes away from LAX. And uh, we've had the uh, business. We opened our doors in 2008, right at the height of the recession. You remember mm. 2008, mm -hmm. man? Oh, it was, yeah. It was a hot yeah, mess. Yeah. And people were saying, you sure you want to put a vegan restaurant in Inglewood? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought, we're vegan. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there are a whole lot of vegans living in this community. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And we opened our doors and we made it through COVID and we still going strong. Um, we have a variety of um, we like to call the, the menu more of a transitional menu because mm -hmm. uh, I prefer people eating more raw. Like I put a right. salad on everybody's plate, but you ought mm -hmm. to see how many salads these people will throw away. Because they're just accustomed <laughs> to eating cooked food. Right, right. And, and understand this, folks. When you add temperatures, when you uh, sub subject your food to temperatures over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, you just kill the life in that food. Mm. Live enzymes is what we need. And we, mm -hmm. we destroy the life in the food when we put heat to it. So, but <clears throat> even though I, a lot of times Ron and I, we'd be acting like, my dear and Uncle John going in there <laughs> telling people, why you ain't eat your salad? Get it to both. Go by. That's the only thing that's live on your plate. <laughs> he wouldn't people would act like that. But because I wanted people to understand, you're throwing, the, you're throwing away the only life on your plate. 
All you want is the cooked food. That's what you're accustomed to. That's what you've been eating all your life. So where do you get your nutrition from? What do you get from your food if all you're eating is death? But anyway, mm -hmm. so we decided to um, present them with a menu. It's got tacos, burritos, quesadillas. I've got a soul mm. food platter. Um, I make my own burgers out of walnuts. We call it the nut burger. Um, ah, nice. And, yeah, and everything is organic. Uh, mm -hmm. and we, we, it's, I'd say 95% organic. My husband's a weirdo when it comes to the organics. It ain't organic. He just like miss me. It's rough enough that we're trusting them with the organic stuff. But if it ain't organic, uh -huh. forget it. So um, <laughs> because we have to trust, we have to trust people with our food. We, it, it's yeah. just the way that it is, and it, it doesn't always work out for us, even organic. I mean, because you mm -hmm. can you can get all kind of uh, uh, bad spinach because the organic. Uh, um, uh, farm is right next to the 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 cow mm. cow farm, and that's right. how we wind up with E. coli and spinach and strawberries mm. bad and all this kind of stuff. Um, we just have some really weird practices. We just um, uh, the people that supply the food for us have not really practiced. They they don't know a lot of times what they're doing. You know what right. I mean? And, mm. and we buy it because where else are we going to get it? And then for mm. people that are not in areas where they can buy organic produce and stuff like that, in little towns where they have to buy from the liquor store, some of us are jacked when it comes mm. to nourishing ourselves. We just, we, 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 we just don't have it available to us. And, and guess who makes all the money? Big Pharma making all the money. Um, um, they, they own the medical mm -hmm. industry. Right. I mean, come on, for, for pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. they do yeah. doctor diagnose you right quick and give you 75 drugs to take. Mm -hmm. And right. every last one of them are liver toxic. Mm -hmm. When I talk about knowledge, I didn't know all this stuff before, mm -hmm. but I know it now. So I'm not going to no doctor and he talks stupid to me because I'm getting right. ready to check him real right. quick. You know yeah. you don't know, and you telling me something <laughs> dumb. You telling me to eat somebody else's liver because my iron is low? Come on now. What is the what is the function of a liver? What does right. the liver do? Mm -hmm. Okay, if if you know what the liver does, why are you telling me to eat another species liver? Mm. It, it does the mm. same thing my liver does. Mm -hmm. And and so no, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is power, especially as yeah. it pertains to me and my life. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, Chef Babette, thank you so much. I mean, <laughs> you you are so inspiring. And, Am I? And, oh, look, I'm telling you, you inspire me. I'm telling you, I'm sharing your picture and telling your story to all my friends because they feeling like they getting old and they can't do stuff and they gaining weight. And I'm like, look at her they they say she's 70 again i still don't believe them but they say she's 70 but you are truly inspire inspiring just remarkable i hope so i and, really hope so because no. as i inspire i'm inspired and mm -hmm. and that's what we need to do for each other you know what i mean mm -hmm. i want to bring you something good i don't want to bring mm -hmm. you no mess no garbage no junk mm -hmm. yeah that's, no, that's, you bring it. No, you bring in good. Cause yeah. look, here's a little secret. Cause you got me using coconut oil. In fact, I just <laughs> share with my audience. I started using coconut oil a couple of years ago. Cause I saw somewhere where you said you. I was like, well, I'm gonna put on some coconut oil. Cause it Chef my bet is a. It, it yes, good? it feel yeah. real good. Yeah. <laughs> so I thank you for that. Yeah. And folks are like you put on coconut. Yep, I'll put on some coconut that's oil. It. That. Yeah, but thank you so much, uh, thank Chef you for Babette. Having you, me, sweetheart. you are you are so inspiring and thank just you. um just such a light. And thank I you. appreciate and keep on you. Taking care of yourself, baby. I will. I will. Yeah, keep on. Thank you. All right.